I would like to share with you guys today is a couple of macro trends that we're seeing in the markets. And when I sit in your seats and look up here, the view of the landscape that you're looking into is an incredibly opportunistic time to be coming into the world of finance. And I'll phrase that relative to when I came into the market in 1990, I spent the first four years on the floor as a floor trader. And at the time, the world came to CME to trade their markets. The OTC markets were not nearly as big as the floor markets. And there was a particular market structure that had been in place for a number of years. What unfolded was a slow process of market evolution and change. And I'll talk about some of the trends on electronification, globalization. But from where you sit right now, the amount of structural change driven by market regulations, given by the uh, implosion of the credit markets, given by the uh, events and we're seeing things unfold in Greece, the hangover from 2008, 2009 has created an incredible amount of change that's wrenching the infrastructure from the moorings of the last four years and creating opportunities in jobs and skill sets that were not required when I came into the market in 1990. When I was hired in 1990, I came into an options group and one of the criteria was, are you of requisite size to stand in a pit and elbow the guy next to you? Uh, could you project your voice? Could you think quickly enough to take uh, printed trading sheets and articulate volatility changes and futures changes, come up with a price and shout out louder and quicker and faster than the next guy? And those are the qualifications criteria. We would hire football players out of college so they could stand at the top pit the top inside the rails without breaking their ribs as guys are being crushed against the, the rails of the, the pits trying to get market orders in and shout them to brokers. Watch Rick Santelli on CNBC sometime, maybe you guys do right now. He's on the floor of the CME and NYMEX, the exchange we own in New York. That used to be a thriving marketplace with colors and lights and noises and shouting. It's dead quiet down there. In fact, we just closed our trading floors a couple of months ago uh, for all of our futures business except for one pit. Uh, and that is just a massive change driven by some of the things on electronification and globalization. But it, 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 while technology is driving so much change in the market, what is changing is the role of the banks, how they were positioned as the primary liquidity providers to these markets for years. They were called the sell side because they would provide liquidity into markets. The banks are no longer the providers of liquidity. They are what we used to call the buy side, the guys are taking liquidity from other participants. You guys are probably interning from some of the very firms, prop firms, hedge funds, and others that are providing much of the liquidity, trading in ways that were completely foreign and non-existent when I came into the market. So as a market maker on the floor, that role has now been replaced by server farms in your firms, in our co-location center out in Aurora, because the market structure has evolved to a point where we're now seeing liquidity provided from very different kinds of firms very different kinds of skill sets than were hired back when I came into the market in 1990. So as I was thinking about if I'm you, what do I want to know? What would I like to hear about today is what are the opportunities? What are the challenges? What's changing? What's different? What kind of skill sets are interesting that I could maybe match up what I want to do and where this market is going? Because one thing about finance is it continues to reinvest itself, reinvent itself based on structural changes, legal changes, global changes, macro changes, positive or negative. So you guys are at a fascinating time of entry into the world of finance. And the opportunities that you will see, you can't imagine now. If I look back on my 25 years of industry experience, I could not have possibly mapped out the career path that I have had going from four years on the floor to four years in Paris to 10 years in London, back to Chicago, having worked on the trading side, investment banking side, and now working for the exchange. So to the point that Scott made before, you can't map out where you're going to be. But given some of the changes in the market, I guarantee you will have lots and lots of opportunities if you're open to change and understand some of the drivers that are actually impacting the world of finance and the world of derivatives particularly right now. I'll spend a couple of minutes talking about two primary themes. Electronification is one of those. I think that's a word we made up. I'm pretty sure that's not a real word, but we use it all the time. It's a process by which we describe and explain how markets have gone from an open outcry mind thought process to a process by which everything that we used to do on the floor is now automated through ridiculously sized server rooms and technology that's driving both our ability to serve our customers and our customers' impact on our markets. And it's fundamentally changed the roles and the types of players that are in our markets. And the exciting part about that opportunity is the skill sets that you guys have in your building 
are very different to achieve success now than, as I said, when I came into this market in 1990. What is driving a lot of this change and the opportunity set for you guys as you look at where you want to end up and what part of the finance role you want to play is it used to always be that the trader, the guy making the trading decision was kind of the lead dog on the desk and he was the guy that was making the money and he was the guy that was actually kind of paid at the end of the day and he was the guy driving the firm resource allocation. And increasingly what we're seeing is with the role of electronification rolling out in our markets, it's actually more about how you're optimizing your infrastructure how you're scaling your business, how you're positioning yourself, and how you're accessing markets globally. So it's actually less the day-to-day -day trading activity that's a big driver of growth for a lot of firms. It's the scale and how you're optimizing your infrastructure. We're doing the same thing on the exchange side to keep pace with our, uh, with our customers. Some of the obvious impacts of electronification is pits are closing. We're able to access a customer base globally because no longer do customers have to wait and access by sending an order into a pit, someone running in, handing a ticket off, making a price, exchanging, then running back out and confirming that fill. So to the extent that the electronic nature of how markets are being provided, whether it's futures or options, changing the roles of players, changing the roles of the impacts, and changing the global access to how customers, whether they're in Sydney, Melbourne, Hong Kong, Taiwan, wherever, accessing our market. So we spent a lot of time thinking about how to access our customers electronically. The other side is the globalization. The globalization is driven and enabled in large part by the role of electronification. As I said, for people that want to trade at 2 in the morning Chicago time or 8 a.m. London time, they don't want to wait for PIT to open. So as we provide more access electronically across a broader range of products, a different set of trading styles, Customers are able to interact with our markets with customers that actually never have seen Chicago, don't know where Chicago is, they don't care. And in the case, the, um, in the, the case of a lot of customer choice, when customers are trying to figure out, trading firms try to figure out what markets to access, it's actually less often the case that certain firms are saying, I want to trade this product because I know the fundamentals of that asset class, but an electronic strategy that works well with the right infrastructure can scale across multiple asset classes. So the impact on us as a service provider is that we're able to capture a customer maybe, maybe in the agricultural quadrant, and because their models work in ags, we can actually cross-sell them into equities or into foreign exchange, into fixed income, into gold. So the opportunities to scale using technology get you access to global customer bases, different asset classes, different geographies, and it actually it enables different kinds of trading activities as well. So as we think about this third piece here, what do you guys, what do you want to be qualified to do? What role do you want to play? Technology has never played a more important time in this market than right now. Everything from speed, efficiency, technology, access, all the way through to what is a growing part of our business is the oversight, the compliance piece, the mechanism by which we oversee our markets and manage our markets in compliance with our, our own regulatory status and responsibilities, but by the means by which CFTC requires us to do that as well. So there are technology skill sets here that are more important now than ever before. So mathematics, which in my day you needed to be fast thinking on your feet because you were only making markets in your mind, now have drafted into coding and into being able to be proficient in multiple languages. Um, so to the opportunities that you guys are studying and the opportunities you're facing in a rapidly changing, rapidly evolving market, fabulous time to enter this market. There are some people that are being nostalgic and wish for those days back in the day when the sell side was the sell side and trading floors were trading floors. But this is, I, I have to say, I'm a little bit envious of the rate of change that you guys are coming into. See the opportunity and grab it. And there are so many different parts to this market. Get your foot in the door. You guys have already done that by the fact that you're here in summer internships in the heart of the derivatives market globally. You'll get no better access to what's actually happening here. But these trends of electronification and globalization, which I've barely touched on today, are themes that start to read in. As you pick up the Wall Street Journal, the Financial Times, Chicago Tribune, you'll see these themes, you'll see these drivers. So think about how you might want to uh, apply that to where you want to go and how you want to get there. So to the extent that you guys are in a fantastic place in a great city with some of the best firms in the world and some of the best minds around you in the seats right here, don't miss the opportunity to be open to any amount of change and opportunity coming your way. Um, I kind of backed into trading. I spent 15 years of my career, five on the floor trading, 10 in Europe in investment banking. I backed into that. The guys came onto campus at Northwestern, interviewed. They seemed like good guys, seemed like a cool thing, and I fell into it. It's been 25 years of the most um, 
intense, challenging, growth-oriented business I ever could have asked for. Uh, did not plan it. My wife knew she wanted to be an attorney from the time she was 12. She's more exciting than that, but that was her career aspiration. I didn't have that vision, but I backed into it, and I love this industry. Well, all the people speaking today are passionate about this industry, so you are in a terrific place. Take advantage of the Loki and resources of accessing any of our firms, or I'm happy to have any of you guys reach out to myself or my staff to help in any way. But uh, you guys are coming into a fantastically dynamic market right now. Do not miss the opportunity to jump on different parts and try different parts of the industry on the size. And I think you'll find that there'll be a place and a fit uh, and be ready for lots and lots of change because change will not slow down, change will speed up. The derivatives market in Chicago continues to reinvent itself and continue to come out on top. So, John, thank you again for bringing us together and for the opportunity to share some insight with you guys.